بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم میں اسلام علیکم پاکستان ویل وی آر بیک ٹو ورڈس کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ ریچنگ نیلی دی اینڈ آف دا ماڈیول ان دا پریویس سیشنس وی آر ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا ڈفرنٹ آپشنس آف دا فیوچر آف کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ سم ویری وائبل آپشنس دوز آپشنس وچ ووڈ کریٹ اے مور گلوبلائزڈ ٹیکچر آف کارپوریٹ گورننس مور اڈیپٹیبلٹی مور فلیکسیبلٹی مور انکلوژن مور ڈائیورسٹی اینڈ مور آپشنس فار آرگنائزیشنس اراؤنڈ دا ورلڈ Uh, through a implementable corporate governance uh, model more universally accepted. However, uh, with all the fervor and energy to converge uh, all the different uh, systems together for a more universally accepted model, however, there are many complexities of reform. And that is what we're going to be looking at today, that due to these complexities, uh, it is easier said than done. And even though a global or universal model can be created, Uh, in paper, uh, the, the implementation is going to be a very big challenge. So let's look at uh, some of these uh, complexity of reform. There will be a strenuous effort to secure commitment to the essential basis of trust. This will occur in countries with different cultures, legal systems, and economic priorities. So again, what we are seeing right now is that after the Cold War and then the breakup of the Soviet Union, again we are seeing new economic poles emerging on a global level. The American, the European, the Russian, and then the Chinese. These four new poles are emerging. Businesses are done in different cultures. They have different legal systems. And definitely they have their own economic priorities. Resources are different, human resources are different, culture, tradition, values are different. And in all of that texture, we are trying to bring about a homogeneous model. It looks very nice, but definitely it will be very complex and very difficult. And maybe the energy or the effort or the resources spent in unifying all of this would not be value for money and would not give that impact that it should. So therefore, these considerations uh, are also uh, very, very important uh, to assume that all countries will adapt to the same corporate governance structures is unrealistic. It is likely uh, that fundamental features of the European and Asian approaches to corporate governance will be maintained. So yes, their contextualization can be maintained. And yet within that, there can be lesser ambiguity and more homogeneity. Uh, within the different systems. Uh, in these different complexities, we see uh, differences will be perceived as part of the cultural integrity and economic dynamism of the national economy. Countries will adopt the important universal principles such as international accounting standards. So there are many aspects which can be adopted, just like the international accounting standards. Uh, we can create more environmental, uh, environmental protection standards, uh, social uh, accountability standards. These can be created and these can be adapted uh, by the countries according to the international standards, according to uh, international auditing and according to international certification. They can be achieved and they can be maintained and that would create that homogeneity within the global contextualization of the different corporations. So that is also very important. This, this part of evolving uh, and uh, this dynamic complexity uh, of corporate life uh, in which both convergence and divergence uh, are uh, basically Uh, occurring simultaneously is over there. So it is a matter of convergence, but due to the complexities, there is also divergence. So the future of corporate governance has to accommodate and assimilate the convergence and divergence and create uh, a model which can be acceptable across the world. So yet having their own national uh, context, but carrying a intrinsically implementable Uh, global flavor within the whole uh, corporate governance model would actually minimize the complexities of reform taking place right now. So if we look at this uh, particular diagram, then what we can see is that these four different boxes uh, basically are created. And we see that on one side, there is convergence. On the other side, there's accountability and institutionalization. And on the other side, we see that there are uh, different aspects. And now, Uh, what we see is that we talked about earlier the Chicago school and that is a market-based basically system and uh, that is 
considered to be of uh, higher priority because it would be driven by the markets. But again, uh, there would be many uh, differences. Uh, on the other side, we see convergence. On another one, we see divergence. And then we see uh, how these different models can be put together. But uh, based upon uh, this matrix which has been created again, uh, the Chicago School is something which carries much more weight. And within these complexities and within these different factors, we come out with a universally, a universally uh, acceptable uh, corporate governance model and framework, which is implemented across the board without any discrimination. And that would be the way forward. Thank you so much.